Hello, hello, and good day, everyone! Welcome to Dragon Needs Gate Glitz Tutorial, episode 75, where we are going to be exploring the interior of the palace. And with the palace, we are going to be exploring with Rin, both when the castle was unloaded and when it's fully loaded. And as well as exploring the interior of the castle with Arok. So we're going to learn all the ways that we can do this, as well as answer some questions that have been asked to me before about the palace, which I do have some good news to bring about some of those questions. That being said, let's go ahead and get things started with Ren. To start things off, let's start with some epic beginnings. This is back to, to uh, what we did in episode two, where we basically bypass in here to be able to get into the um, place where all the treasure is. We pop up here, and I do want to note there is this to our right, and all the way here to our left are two sides that we can actually fall off on, which we are not going to do, at least not right now. We're going to make our way over here, which will then cause Ren to slide down right here, as no, I can't get back up there through normal means, so we're going to just move on from here to go to the right to drop down over here to then drop down over here and then we can make our way to the treasure room and steal all the treasure. That is what we all know from episode 2. The only other thing of note is exploring down here where we can either access the switch over here or to access the flag that would uh, allow us to have the interrogation cutscene with Zola Dane. Uh, the only other thing to do now is kind of explore some of the key outer limit points that we can exploit to have Ren pop up in different locations. We have this location over here that if we fiddle around with the corner right here, hit hitting the wall to the left side of where the outer limbs, it'll pop up right at the entrance to where we can go ahead and leave out of here. Another entrance over right here, fitting around with this side, uh, we are going to be popping up right around, let's see here, right where we started going back down here. Well, again, it's a shortcut. The other thing that we can basically do is pop around this corner right here, or the wall to my right here, uh, going to the head here. What we're going to be counting here is basically, if I turn my camera to the right, uh, using the right stick, I can get Ren to be basically uh, sliding on a slope. If we spam X and triangle like we do with Arok in uh, the balcony, we can pop Ren right up here. And then, of course, uh, now that we're up here, we can just simply walk, run forward and basically continue on uh, exploring the palace as per normal. But you can run the risk of Rin when you're trying to spam X and Triangle, where the after image of Rin will start to separate from her like this, and which will result in Rin's death. So be very careful. Now, messing around with this side, however, can actually pop us right up into the, let's see here, right up into the foyer area in which we can either go to the throne room, or we can just go ahead and leave on out of here. Without any further ones that we can really explore down on this floor, we can actually backflip onto the torch backflip up here to actually explore this little platform, uh, which we can just do some acrobatics on, but that's really pretty much it. Moving on to this floor, let's go ahead and meangle with this area and kind of show exactly about where it'll pop up when messing around with this air, this spot. Now, once we get up through here, we will pop on the side uh, that would be able to access the uh, treasures up here. But the thing is, you can also experience some rather weird glitches, like falling through the floor, taking a big dive, and then getting uh, suspended right here uh, like this. <laughs> uh, the other thing, too, is that you can encounter some of the, the infinite climb, but if you encounter this in this location, you'll just die. <sighs> but there's actually an easier spot to actually access that area, which is simply, uh, one, keep these sparrows here, backflip up to here, then backflip back to make sure you stay up here, then make your way over to here to immediately just be able to access the area out here. You just pop on out, and uh, there we go. Easy peasy. And then you just come up here and be able to explore the uh, castle as per normal. 
However, going further down uh, this way, uh, trying to bypass up in here, will result in our untimely death. But this spot right next to it behaves a little differently. When trying to interact with this outer limit, you will just proceed to fall onto your death no matter what. The reason why that spot does this, however, is because there is no invisible ledge or platform above where you're at that's connected to the castle. So each time you would try to use that spot to try to pop up, instead you'll fall down to your death. I do want to note to not destroy these three barrels here because they are a prime location for us to perform the phantom rolling glitch. Now to double check and make sure, yes I do have it activated. What we want to do here with the phantom rolling glitch is to roll up here uh, to then pop up this location. This location will take us to about where the treasure is. Which right now, the Outer Limits can kind of disagree with us. But once we're able to get through, we should be able to bypass through everything. The reason why we do this is so that if we pop Rin up to in the treasure room while doing the phantom rolling glitch, we can maintain the phantom rolling glitch and be able to bypass through here and take all the treasure. Now, of course, we're going to be stuck in the ground here, but we can simply press select and then spam backflip to get out of there. Anywhere around the wall to my right here, we can choose an hour limit to have ourselves uh, pop up to uh, the mountain formation behind... Uh, the throne room where we can basically use it to pop up to get to the ceiling of the throne room. I like that one spot I did in particular because it can immediately pop us on top of the ceiling. And we can use any side around these adjacent walls to pop up into the throne room. And which we will do right here like I did in episode 74 to access the throne room. Of course, we can just backflip up to the bookshelf slash uh, door to then backflip up to here to access the throne room and not actually have to deal with any outer limits. But keep in mind if you do use the outer limits that the outer limits are weird and sometimes will do a different effect than what you actually intended to, much like dropping down here to the bottom of the basement. Now that we're done with the hidden basement, let's talk about the outer limits in the main area here. Uh, which right now we're in the office of Zola Dane, and if we access the outer limb out here, we can pop up to this rock formation here to then jump up to the roof of the throne room. A newly discovered location is this tower over here, in which the if we use the outer limit over here and mess with it a little bit, we should be able to eventually pop Ren out to this land formation here, in which we turn her around here to jump up to here to this invisible platform, uh, in which we can either drop back down to where we were, or we can choose to jump out of here to access the first roof, in which we will touch upon later in the video. The most important outer limit is right here, in which we can access the treasury, to then jump out with all the treasure, to exit out via the staircase, and pop up out of here just like an outer limit with all of Sardana's gold. Moving on to the throne room, I do want to note that the access is blocked off by a trapezoidal prism, a, more, a trapezoidal prism with an extension over here, which would look like a backwards L if it were looking up from the top. Attempting to access it normally would just lead to Ren uh, just sliding off a slope. Of course, when that slope is connected to an outer limit, I can't land here. that can just lead nothing more than just her death. Sorry, Arok. That's why we need to use the outer limits and the or the bookshelf to be able to access the throne room here. But I do want to note, since uh, it is in a trapezoidal form, trapezoidal prism, using the knights is not going to give us the limits here. They're actually are a bit of unreachable right now. Which what we need to do is actually use the bow to figure out as to where uh, the absolute limit is. Which is right here. If I step beyond this point, Ren will slide down. And then pop up to here. Again, it's just another way to access there. If jump into the knights over on this side, we'll have Ren drop to, down to there. Accessing the knights over here will may it will either pop Ren up there or will kill her. Uh, so note to self, just again, be careful messing with the outer limits and save the game whenever you feel like you could lose progress. In fact, I do want to note that the easiest spot to pop out up from is this spot over here directly behind the throne here. 
on the right on the right side you would see that there is uh, nothing up there but on the left side there is you can see the mount you can see the mountain slope so here we can just immediately just walk up and pop up here no need to mess up with an outer limit just simply pop up here and now you can get up on top of the throne room and be able to explore the unloaded palace as normal all right, let's combine everything we learned in regards to navigating the palace here and combine everything into one fluid motion. We're going to get to the top of the throne room of the palace. And so we're going to pop up to here, and then we're going to go over to here, as we just did, pop up to here, and then we pop up here on top of the palace, and we can now explore, continue exploring the palace as normal. Once when you know where all the outer limits are and what they do, you can you can basically go anywhere you want. Anywhere you want, as uh, you know where you're going to pop up. Just remember that the outer limits can be a bit tricky sometimes, but most importantly, save the game when exploring around here and just have fun figuring out things yourself. Now let's discuss about the palace when it is all loaded in. Let's first talk about some locations in which we can perform some phantom rolling glitches. First location is right here in which we can perform a who turn to then use a ledge right up here to perform our phantom rolling glitch. This location will keep you right above ground and there's one more location that does just that as well as two other locations that will put you inside the ground. Both of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Our second location is right in the front entrance, which will perform a who turn. And then we can't actually pop up here, so instead we're going to use some sideways tunnel flips and get it down in the ground just enough for Ren to be able to pop up with a roll. And now we have the phantom rolling glitch activated, also still above ground. The other two locations I have shown you before when the castle was not loaded in, but basically we use the treasure room to be able to have Ren be into the ground while the phantom rolling glitch is activated. Being above ground allows us to access the throne room, while being inside the ground allows us to explore the entrance area, all of its related rooms, and as well as all the outer limits associated with this area, including underneath the staircase. If you want to transition to above ground while maintaining the phantom rolling glitch, you can either pop up at the entrance, pop up through the secret passageway, or pop up at any ground that is right above you uh, to allow you to continue using the phantom rolling glitch. That way you can access the throne room without having to necessarily load back to a previous save. With the phantom rolling glitch, we can showcase here that there are no hidden rooms throughout the castle here. Even if we were to like roll through here, or even roll through here, there are no hidden rooms, even when the castle's loaded in. However, there are hidden areas, much like this spot right here, in which we can uh, use this location to be able to turn around here, backflip up to here, again, backflip up to here, to then be able to access this balcony here. This gives us a beautiful view of the northwestern lake as well as some mountain range over here to our left. There are three ways in which we can access this balcony, plus one additional one that we will mention later in the video. The first method is going to revolve around using the mountainside located right behind the throne room. Uh, we make our way over to this corner right here, and then we're going to perform a Ren Glide glitch. And so we'll do a, a sideways tunnel flip over here, and then we'll actually run into an invisible lull here to get a feel where it is, because we're going to go down right to here to backflip to get us to access the hidden area over here, in which we can then proceed and do a uh, turn around and backflip up to here. A second way may be one that you're all far too familiar with, in which we're going to proceed on over here, make our way around this corner over here, drive yourself down here and make your way all the way along the wall here, just be careful not to fall off the edge here to your death. But as soon as you make your way around that corner, you then make your way to this corner in which we will use rolling to get underneath it, and then we access the hidden area. The third way is my own personal favorite in which we'll do a who teleport right underneath the platform here. We'll then make our way and perform some sideways tunnel flips to then do a f uh, perform a phantom rolling glitch as we'll make our way all the way over to the door here. Then we phase right through it to access the hidden area with the phantom rolling glitch. This is my personal favorite just because we actually use a door to access this hidden area, which makes it, I don't know, a bit more flavor a flavorful way about accessing the balcony here. Let's talk about more hidden areas inside the castle. Utilizing behind the treasure room, we have here a hidden hallway, or at least what kind of is like a hidden hallway, 
uh, in which access about this far in, in which kind of like we would need the lens of truth to be able to see the actual boundaries of said hallway. Uh, also going out back behind here, there's a little alcove here that can uh, allow us to be able to easily pop up to access the um, mountaintops behind the throne room. Utilizing the phantom rolling glitch inside the throne room here, going underneath this balcony, we'll be able to access this kind of hidden area, which is located on top of uh, Zolodane's office, in which we can make our way through here, uh, which we'll need to roll underneath here, but mostly there's no collision programming underneath this tower here. So we can just kind of explore up here however we want to. Just be careful with the outer limits in this location here, as rain can actually cease to exist permanently in this location, in which we, there's not really much that we can do, except pause and load back to our previous save. So again, be careful, and as always, save the game before exploring these hidden areas. The next hidden area will utilize going above the throne room, following all the way back to the entrance, which we'll then drop off over here, to then do, proceed to do a backflip, hit our head against the invisible ledge, to access the ceiling above the entrance area. We can also backflip up to here from the right side as well, but this location allows us access to other locations. One of them I've already showed you off to the right, but here we can access the location off over here to our left above the treasure room, thus being able to access this area here. Back above the entrance hall, we can actually do something rather amusing here if we save the game and then load back from that said save. We're going to encounter here basically an invisible Rin, but this is unlike any other invisible Rin for she can actually move while in an invisible state. Of course, uh, if we jump around too much in this state, we we'll, could end up spontaneously dying upon landing. But this isn't exactly what I want to show you guys. Let me look back here and show exactly what I mean. While Rand is in this invisible state, if we do a sideways tunnel flip, we can actually have Rand infinitely glide to almost anywhere we want to. I mean, there are some invisible boundaries that Rand can't glide and get past, but she can literally glide anywhere she want to. And in fact, if you want to get out of this state for some reason, you just need to navigate Rin outside the perimeter of what's considered the palace's interior. You can also do this in these two locations as well. Going back to over here, if we phantom roll into this spot right here, we will actually access another hidden area in which if we use a Rin glide glitch, we can glide up on top uh, of the basement area. Now from here, we're actually gonna make our way all the way up here. If we navigate Rin all the way up to here, we'll actually access an unloaded throne room. Now, the thing about uh, this, as you can see right there, we are still in the boundaries of the basement area. This means we are limited to the area of the basement rather than the throne room itself. Any attempts to try to go and try to jump on the throne room would just have us end up falling through the floor. So unfortunately, we can't explore the unloaded throne room in its entirety, but what we can do is if we leave the uh, limits of the basement, we can actually load right back into here the throne room. Now there's a second way in which we can access the top of the basement, which is this spot right here. If we have Ren roll at an angle and to the left, slightly into this outer limit right here, we can have Rin be able to drop down and be able to explore the top of the basement without ever having to use the Rin Glide glitch. I also want to note that when ro Phantom Rolling in this particular area, there's not really any way to get out of here, but there is. If we go up to here and get Rin stuck up right here, we can then have her crouch down and have her roll right across a slippery slope. And then we can roll her up here and then just simply press the let to backflip up here. And there we go. We got out of it and now we're in the throne room. Again, it's how you're able to roll on a slope that's supposed to be slippery that she would slide down on. I don't know. The outer limits are weird. <laughs> Over to the door across from Zolodane's office. If we roll through here, we can go to that this hidden area that already showcased earlier. 
uh, when, when the castle was unloaded. But I do want to note, when using the door here, if we look down at the entrance here, it gives you the feeling that this could have been an act, that door could have been access to a staircase that could have gone all the way up to that ledge up there. Or even better yet, it could have been used to be able to access a second floor in which we could access the balconies. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and address the balconies in the throne room. All right, everyone, let's get to those two balconies in the throne room here. And I'm going to show you two methods that you can do it. One method will probably only work in the American version of the game, as far as I'm told, because we are going to need to use the Rin Glide glitch discovered by Scone Killer. In which the first step of our uh, process here uh, is on either side of these uh, statues of, of dragons, uh, we can go ahead and backflip to an invisible ledge, in which we'll tilt control stick to the right, the left control stick, uh, to have Ren rotate. And that rotating backflip will get her access to this invisible ledge here, in which we'll use that invisible ledge to access the head here. And then we will activate the Ren Glide glitch to get to the chandelier here. Yes, we can use the chandeliers as platforms, which I kind of, in some levels, I kind of wish there were some chandeliers that we can jump across, some perilous pits or whatnot. Uh, but uh, that doesn't exist in this game. However, we're going to jump on top of this candle here. And we're going to use this. This one candle makes it possible for us to access the balcony here. In which we're going to use a ring glide glitch. In which we want to be sure not to complete our tunnel flip. As doing so at the peak will hit our head against the ceiling. And then she'll plummet down not activating the ring glide glitch. So we're going to activate it just before enough time that she'll be able to clear the balcony's railings. And that should do it. Yep. Made it to the balcony here everyone. Woohoo. Now let's uh... Have a look around here with the torch. And as Rin did say, uh, we can't actually, the uh, door's locked and we can't open it. But as I showed earlier, there's nothing behind here. There's nothing loaded behind here, so there's no hidden room. But yes, we can actually access this balcony. And much like so, we can do so with the other balcony. Now the difference on this side, I do want to point out is that here we can just simply do a ring glide glitch over to this spot right here. This does not work over in the other side because there's an invisible wall that protects this. Uh, but we can jump across over here and then we can jump on top of the balcony right here. It's locked. Yes, Rin, I am well aware it's locked and we cannot open these doors. It's unfortunate, but this is what we have. But However, as I said, this incorporates uh, the Ren Glide glitch that only seems to be available in the American version of the game. For those of you playing the PAL version, you wouldn't be able to access these balconies. So let me talk about the second method I mentioned, which unfortunately only works for this side. It does not work for the other side, as that side is unreachable in the PAL version of the game, as far as I can tell, and I'm sorry for that. In order to access the balcony uh, without the ring glide glitch, we're going to need to phantom roll out to the mountainside behind the throne room. Then we're going to pop up here, and as you can see, there is no second half of the throne room loaded in, which is why we can't access the balcony on the right, which we can only access the balcony on the left. From here, we're going to need to jump up on top of here, so we can then be able to make our way over to this uh, corner here and hug the left side as close as possible, to then be able to do a who turn into the ground here. From here, we should have limited movement in which we can perform some sideways tunnel flips that we're going to do to the right. Performing these tunnel flips will have Ren be able to get further into the ground, which is what we want. However, the common thing to happen here is to have her immediately pop back up. That's normal, but we can actually get around this. The reason why I do tunnel flips to the right is because, well, we run the risk of Ren jumping out of our spot, and which is better to jump on top of the throne room than it is to fall down to our left and take damage. Of course, we can utilize what we have learned about navigating the castle's outer limits to pop Ren back up to here so we can resume our work on top of the throne room. So what we are looking for is to be able to get Ren far enough into the ground here that we can actually have her start falling down, in which here I need to do one more jump, and then voila, we're able to prevent her from going up and able to have her fall down to this ledge right here, 
We want to save the game here because we want to have Ren turn invisible. From here, we need to rotate around here to see if we can recreate Ren here. Okay, then turn her back invisible. Uh, turn here, and then we're going to tilt the control stick forward in the direction of the balcony and jump repeatedly and keep jumping forward, keep jumping forward uh, repeatedly, 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 until we finally jump out of here and we're on top of the balcony here. And that's how you access this balcony without the Ren Glide glitch. Now, one thing you could encounter after jumping repeatedly is having an invisible Ren jump out of here instead, in which we can perform a tunnel flip to have her glide around an unloaded uh, throne room. In order to get out of this gliding state in this location, we need to make our way as far, close as we can to the mountain slopes out behind the throne room. Uh, from here, we're gonna then activate a spell from the menu, in which we'll have her pop down low enough that she'll s s slide for some reason, in which case we can go ahead and access the throne top of the throne room again, or we can just load back to her previous save and try again. If the invisible Rin is becoming a problem, it could mean that you're close enough to be able to do a side flip to pop out, and then you can just jump onto here as per normal, not having to deal with Invisible Ren. However, that's not always the case. So if for some reason that you can't just jump repeatedly and pop up onto the balcony here, or you can't just side flip and then jump onto the balcony here, uh, it could mean that you need to load back to the top of the uh, uh, throne room and try again from up there. So it might be important to utilize at least two saves when trying to access this side of the balcony. That's all we have time for this episode, everyone, as we will be actually needing to extend this to a part two as we will explore the rooftop balcony as well as getting Arak inside the palace. So look forward to that in part two as we just kind of ran over the time. The reason being, I found all these different hidden areas that I didn't really intend to find, I didn't really know about at the time, so I assumed I didn't see any hidden rooms, so I was like, showcase all the doors that they lead to nothing, and then it's, oh wait, there's all these different hidden areas and stuff that we can actually access. And then it extended the episode a lot further than what I had planned, and, well, we're here right now saying that it needs to be extended to part two. So my apologies on that. I've been doing a lot of these part two, part threes, in which we're not going to have any of part three. We are for sure it's going to be a two-parter, because I'm not even sure if it's going to be really that long of an episode. I think it's probably going to be under uh, 20 minutes, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong on many times. <laughs> but just bear with me on that. Uh, the next part two will be coming out, uh, not next week, but possibly the following week. I'm going to be gone on vacation and seeing my brother getting married. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, looking forward uh, to all that. So uh, wish me a safe trip and I'll see you all got see you all in episode two in two weeks. Uh, so uh, like, uh, comment, subscribe. And as always... Have a great life, everyone.